This is Karen Kuniyuki with the Emanuel School of Fine Arts. Today, we're going to explore art that might have been inspired by the spirograph. In my last lesson, I showed you what a spirograph toy looked like. I showed you how to make one using recycled materials, and we also looked at a spirograph drawing machine that was made out of Lego. Today, I'm gonna to show you three artists that use a spirograph idea to create their own unique artwork. The first artist is Nikki Savas, who is known for her physically immersive and optically dazzling installations. Nikki is from Australia, but her work has been shown all over the world. Her large scale works are made from specific geometric formulas resulting in three-dimensional wooden structures covered in geometric patterns of colorful wool. She uses string to create her spirograph-like designs. The second artist I want to tell you about is Robert Balk, and he's a German artist. When he was studying at the university level, he had to come up with a project about communication design, and he was really interested in mechanical drawing, so he developed a machine that would create spirograph-like designs. And not only did he have a machine that he could adjust and change, but he also developed a machine that was travel-sized. And the cool thing about Robert is that he and a friend took a six-week bicycling trip through Italy, and they took this drawing machine with them and they would set it up on street corners and markets along the way. And tourists, as well as locals, enjoyed the experience of creating interactive art that allowed them to strike up conversations with perfect strangers. The third and final artist I want to show you um, is Tony Orico, and he is a performance artist. And a performance artist, they create art while people are watching them. Orico uses his body as a tool of measurement and by outstretching his arms and using his arms in a synchronized movement, his gestures create geometric designs. If he continuously makes the motion over and over again, that area becomes darker. And um, as he rotates and moves through this sequence of motions, he himself becomes covered in graphite. So by the time he's done, he looks like the inside of a pencil himself. And that is part of the performance aspect of his work. His body creates the spirograph design. You could maybe grab some sidewalk chalk and go outside and see if you can create a design It'd be a lot like making a snow angel. Now it's time for us to make something unique. You can start with plain paper and just one pen if that's all you have around. But if you have some watercolor paints or some inks, it might be fun to experiment with the background like I'm doing here. I've decided that for my very colorful artwork, I'm going to need um, about nine different backgrounds. So what you see me doing here is I'm just applying a wet on wet wash to the background. I put water down on my paper. It is watercolor paper. And then I'm adding watercolor paint to it. And I'm gonna let those dry overnight. And these are the backgrounds that I end up with. I made a couple extra in case I messed up. Then I used my Lego Spirograph machine that I built following the instructions that were featured in my previous lesson. And this took some tinkering with, and it has two arms on the Spirograph machine, and depending on where I place those arms, it creates a different kind of design. Now for those of you who don't have any watercolor paints at all, that's fine. You can take plain paper. If you're lacking for art paper, think about reusing the backside of an old greeting card or the inside of a white envelope. 
Um, I trim these pieces of paper to fit my Spirograph machine and then I just use a regular blue gel pen. The gel pens work better than a regular Bic pen. Um, so see if you can find a gel pen around your house. Once I've created my Spirograph designs, I need to trim them all to circles that are of the same exact size. And so you saw me use a compass to do that. Um, if you don't have a compass, you can find a lid, um, like a, a Quaker oatmeal container lid or a raisin container lid, something that's round that you can trace. And you position that over each circle in the same place and trace it so you have a circle and cut those out. And then I took each circle and I cut them in half and then in half again. So each circle was cut into four pie wedges. Once I have all of my pie wedges that are the same exact shape, then I pull out a background paper. And this can be any color. Um, I chose blue because my drawings are all blue and white. And then I just kind of play around with the orientation of each pie wedge to create a unique design. Um, and then once you have the design that you like, then you just glue it down. You'll see that in my finished project, I decided to change one of the rows. Now I'm gonna do the process again using my colorful circles. Once again, I've traced them all to be the same exact size circle. I cut them all out, and then I take each of those circles and I split it into four equally sized pie wedges. Once I have all of those wedges, that's when the fun begins. I was using just a plain piece of gray paper and I'm going to show you five different ways that you can position all of your pie wedges to create five unique compositions. And instead of gluing them down right away, I took a photograph with my phone and then I took that into Instagram and I saturated the color and gave it a little border. And then I rearranged my pieces again. And I do this five different times. I could probably do it even more if I had um, the time and the enthusiasm for it. But you probably don't want to watch an hour long video. You're probably pretty excited to try this on your own.
This last design was my favorite. It took me a little bit of brain power to figure out how to create the pinwheel and to repeat the pinwheel design, but I think that's how I'm going to end up gluing down my pieces in the end. You should try to rearrange your pieces several times. You never know what you're going to discover. And take photos of each one, and as always, please share your results with us. Post your results on our Facebook page so we can see what you've made at home. And this art lesson was produced to support families educating at home during the COVID-19 pandemic. If you enjoyed this video, please share our Facebook page, share our YouTube channel with your friends and families and help this resource become something that will bring joy to another family's home. Thank you, and see you next time.